Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an over. Overcomer. The Bible says if you're born of God, that makes you an overcomer. And whether you act like it or not is another thing. Whether you live like it or not is another thing. But if you are born again, if Jesus is your Lord, you've got everything inside you to make you an overcomer. It needs to be fed. It needs to be developed. It needs to be exercised. God has given to every person a measure of his very own faith that he used to create the universe with. That's how he created everything. And so if, if he can create stars and galaxies with this faith, even a tiny amount of it in you would get you through today. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. And help you deal with what you need to and overcome. So put your hands on yourself and, and say it out loud, I am a believer. I am a believer. And the very faith of God. And the very faith of God. A measure of his own faith. A measure of his own faith. Is inside me. Is inside me. And it works, and he works in my life. In my life. Making me victorious. Making me victorious. Father, all of us agree together today as touching these things and asking for that which would feed us in just the areas we need right now that would quicken us and be our answer and be our direction. We ask for it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Would you look please in Hebrews, the third chapter again, Hebrews 3, scripture we've been looking at for some weeks now. Uh, learning how to overcome unbelief. In Hebrews 3, 7, he said, As the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Verse 10, he said, I was grieved with that generation, and said they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my way. His ways are knowable, or else why he wouldn't say something like this. He, it wouldn't be reasonable to, to be displeased with somebody because they didn't come to know your ways if it wasn't accessible or knowable. Mm -hmm. Said out loud, I can, I can. Know, God. know God. I can know his ways. ways. Said out loud, Father... Father, reveal to me, reveal to me your, righteous ways, your righteous ways, your holy ways, your, holy ways, your, good, ways, your good ways, your faithful ways, your, faithful your merciful ways. ways. Your merciful reveal ways. to me reveal all your ways. All your ways. Uh, the psalmist said that the, uh, uh, the Israelites, this first generation that he's talking about, that God brought out of Egyptian slavery, they, they saw God's acts, A-C-T-S, his acts, but Moses knew his ways. It's possible to see and be in the midst of astounding miracles and the move of God and yet never get to know God or know who he is or know how he works. And so that's what he said. He said, uh, I was grieved with them because they, they, they always erred, went the wrong way, and they've not known my ways. And, and the reason he's justified in being displeased with them about that is because uh, they had every opportunity to get to know him and learn his ways. They didn't know his ways because they didn't want to. They didn't want to. And that's exactly the state of most of the earth today. Most of the billions on the planet don't want to know God. It's sad, but it's reality. I used to think in the beginning days of my ministry that the biggest problem was ignorance. People just don't know. 
And the scripture said, the prophet said, even God's people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. But it took me a few years to realize that's only half of that verse. The rest of the verse, very same verse, the rest of it went on to say, because you have rejected knowledge. See, God's not hiding what you need to know to be saved from you. That'd be cruel. He's not trying to make it hard on anybody to get to know him or come to him. But the truth is, there are millions on the planet. They have seen glimpses of him. They have seen, they've had moments of awareness. Many have even heard the gospel preached. But they just didn't care. They don't want it. They don't want to know any more about it. They want something else. That's what John uh, 3 talks about. That light came into the world and men loved darkness rather than light. And you can't change that. And you can't make somebody choose something differently. But we don't know who will and who won't receive or reject. So we've got to proclaim the truth to everybody. Amen. Is that right? Yes. Like they will and some will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're not going to fall off our chair and quit proclaiming it because somebody doesn't. Mm -hmm. We're just going to say, next, mm -hmm. you want to hear it? <laughs> Why? Because this will set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth will set you free. Why don't you say it out loud if it, if it is your choice. Say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you fully and completely. I desire to know you more. Hallelujah. Well, spending time in his word, communing with his spirit like what we're doing right now, that's one way that happens. So uh, he, he went on to say, verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We're made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Let's go back to Numbers, the 14th chapter, and uh, remind ourselves. Now, uh, we've covered this chapter, uh, part of it already, in previous weeks. If you go to faithschool.org, all of the previous messages of this series are available there, and there's no charge. There's no cost at all. So go back and, and get caught up with us. But we saw in Numbers 14 that this was the tenth major time and event where the people had chosen in mass to not listen to God. They had chosen, instead of trusting, they chose to fear and doubt. Instead of obeying, they chose to disobey. Now, the, everything has built up to this moment to where that they sent spies into the land and they came back and brought the report. Ten of them said, too many giants is too hard. No way we can do it. Two individuals, Joshua, and Caleb had a different report. The Bible said Caleb had a different spirit. How many know even if uh, millions around you are full of unbelief, you don't have to be? Amen. Is that right? Yes. You can have a different spirit. And you can have a different report. Their report was, it is an exceeding good land. It is a land just like God told us. It flows with milk and honey. Yeah, there's some giants and stuff in it. But if God is for us, if he's with us, we can take it. Amen. Let's go get it. <laughs> and it made the other people so mad, they wanted to stone them. Kill them. Isn't that something? But uh, wanted, they wanted to kill them for being positive. <laughs> for being, for, for talking victory, for saying we can, instead of agreeing with their hopelessness. Now you'll find that, that uh, unbelief wants to cry and feel sorry for itself. And if you say anything other than 
oh, that's okay, baby, I'll cry with you. If you say, now come on, no, uh-uh, dry your eyes, you know, stir up, we can, uh, that will make unbelief mad. They were like, well, you don't know what I'm dealing with, and, and, and anger, and it, they got so mad they wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb right here. But you've got to be willing to deal with that unless you want to get the same results as unbelieving people get. You've got to be willing to take some uh, persecution, to take some people talking about you. Well, you're just goody, goody, two shoes. Always talking that faith stuff, church stuff, Jesus stuff. You don't even live in the real world. Well, leave me alone. I'm happy. <laughs> No, God is real. Hallelujah, his word is real. His faith is real. And he still does miracles. Yes, he does. He still does miracles. They're happening a lot more than people think. You just don't usually see them on the news. They tend to report the bad stuff. Well, um, go to jump to uh, chapter 16, if you would, number 16. We'll come back here maybe to give some detail, but what we're studying now is this 11th event that happened after Kadesh Barnea in, in chapter 14, and, and we're calling it Korah's Rebellion, because that's what happened. Well, you might say, what's this got to do with unbelief? Everything, because unbelief that, that was called evil unbelief in Hebrews 3 in our text is rebellious. It's not just a matter of ignorance. They didn't know what to believe. It was a matter they knew clearly what to believe, but they absolutely refused to believe it. It's a defiance. It's a disobedience. It's a rebellion. Unbelief is rebellious. He said here uh, that Korah, and uh, Dathan and Abiram and on, they took men, verse 2, uh, they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes in the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, you take too much on you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord's among them. Wherefore do you lift up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? Now, we know from other scriptures that Moses did not promote himself to this position. It wasn't his idea at all to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. It wasn't his plan. It wasn't his idea. What happened at the Red Sea? wasn't Moses' idea. The water out of the rock, the manna out of the sky, I mean thing after thing after thing after thing. Moses didn't do that. Aaron didn't do that. God did that. They were simply his vessels, his mouthpieces. His, he chose them and he's using them. And what these people are doing is they are rejecting God by rejecting his choice. Back in, in Numbers 14, where we just were right after uh, the, the ten spies says we can't go in, they cried in their tents all night long, it says, and then they said, let's make us a captain, a new captain, and go back to Egypt. See, that's unbelief is always looking back. Unbelief rejects God's choice, and they're refusing his leadership. And so Moses, when he heard it, he fell on his face and he spoke to Korah and his company. He said, even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who are holy and will cause him to come near to him. Even him whom he's chosen, he'll call to come, cause to come near to him. Because that's the whole thing they were saying in verse 3. They're saying, Every, all of us are holy. We're all God's people. He used, who do you think you are telling us what to do? trying to be a, a prince and a leader over us. Who puts you in charge? You've got too big for your britches. You, you've taken too much on you. you. You've gone too far. Why is this 
account in here. <laughs> Why has it been recorded? We know from our text in Hebrews, so we don't get caught up in this. Korah, Dathan, Abiram, on. These are leaders. I mean, Korah's in the ministry, ministry of helps. And then 250 of the most famous successful leaders in the, among the whole group, they're involved in this rebellion. You got to watch who you hang around. You got to watch who you listen to. The enemy's very subtle. He's very tricky. It starts sounding plausible and reasonable to you. And, and, and if you, you, know, you, you stay away from God, stay away from his word, stop praying, stay away from church, stay away from godly people, and listening to the reasonings and rationalizings of the ungodly, next thing you know, you'll be nodding your head and thinking, well, yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's more than just thoughts and reasoning. These spirits are involved and they pressure you and push you to agitate you, to anger you, to upset you. And the, one of the devil's favorite things is a frantic, seething mob that is just out of their head with rage because that's when people die. He, he wants the whole world to just go into a mindless violence and frenzy it got that way in Noah's time. And that's when the flood destroyed the whole thing. And ever since then, the enemy, every generation, he tries to push it back toward that complete chaos, hate, selfish, envy, evil. And so all of us have flesh. And this flesh wasn't born again. <laughs> it was our inner man. And you got to watch, you need to be aware that when you're around somebody and they're talking this stuff and everybody's getting all worked up and they're all upset and you realize you're starting to feel mad and it's unreal, you, you need to wake up and go, what am I doing? What am I doing? I got to get away from this, mm -hmm. right? This is the devil. This is the enemy. What's he, what's he, what's he trying to do? He wants to steal something. He wants to kill something. He wants to destroy and he's got to use people to do it. So he's got to work them up into this hate and frenzy and violence. Rebellion. We've got to overthrow. Get rid of who? God's choice. <laughs> Get rid of God's choice and put who in there? Who are you going to replace them with? Keep reading. He said, uh, tomorrow, verse 7, he said, the Lord's going to show who he has chosen. This is what you do. You take censers, Korah and all his company. You put fire uh, in them before the Lord. And it'll be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he'll be holy. You take too much on you, you sons of Levi. You have gone too far. Now, any thinking person would not have done this. <laughs> a censer is a metal container that uh, would carry coals of fire and they would use it to burn incense. These are still used in, in some services today. Some of them are on chains to where they swing and it's a metal thing and you put like coals of fire in the bottom and then you put incense on top of that and, and so you can carry the fire and the incense and smoke comes out of it. Incense. And the Lord had already given them the holy anointing oil and its compounds mixture and the holy incense. He told them exactly uh, what uh, spices and elements to use and the measurements of them. And he commanded them, nobody else was to have this kind of incense at their house and nobody could offer it except Aaron, the priest, and his sons, uh, the, the high priest family. Only them. And everybody knew that. In fact, when two of Aaron's sons back earlier, uh, when they got through building the tabernacle of uh, furniture and stuff and, and, and consecrating it, 
fire fell from God and consumed the sacrifices. You'll find this, this happened many times. God is fire. <laughs> and it shouldn't surprise us he makes stars. <laughs> They're fire. And the Bible said our God is a consuming fire. And one of the prophets that saw God on the throne one time said, from his loins down, it looked like fire. And from his loins up, it looked like fire. It's going to be amazing to see him, <laughs> isn't it? The Father, God, he's not human. He's not a human being. Sometimes people stare out in the night sky and go, wonder if there's life out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. And it's not humanoid. It's not Terran. It's not of earth. Angels are not human. And the, we see in Revelation winged creatures that had four faces. Amazing things. We're going to see all that one of these days. But God himself answered in fire numerous times. They were offering the sacrifices to them. He just received them. He just went whoosh. And they were disintegrated. Well, right after that, two of Aaron's sons decided they want to get in on this fire thing. And so they came and offered what the Bible called strange fire, which means unauthorized fire. They came out and danced around and held up the fire. And, the, and fire came and burned them up. Whoosh. And everybody, you know, you know, Step back and, and, and Aaron, this, these are his boys. And God said, you know, that he had warned them about this. Well, the reason I'm bringing it up is because now he says, all right, you want to you wanna see who God has chosen? All of you get you some censers and put some fire and incense in them and come out tomorrow and you can offer them up and we'll let the Lord show whom he has chosen. How many understand you got to be dumb? <laughs> Is that right? To show up tomorrow with a censer to burn incense. You, how do you get that dumb? And yet, what they say? Well, we will. We will. Tomorrow. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> Pride makes you stupid. Doesn't it? <laughs> uh, he said, you take too much on you, you sons of Levi. And Moses said to Korah, here I pray you, you sons of Levi. He tries to reason with them. And he tries to get, help them get the right perspective. He says, is it a small thing to you? That the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister to them. And he's brought you near to him and all your brethren, the sons of Levi with you. Do you seek the priesthood also? I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. He said, you don't appreciate the place God has given you? From all the tribes, all the people, there were two million some of them out there. God selected you and let you handle his holy things. The Levites were what we'd call the helps ministry today. They set up the tabernacle. They helped break it down. They, they helped carry it. They helped with the sacrifices and the wood and the water and the list goes on. They were involved in the daily ministration and the helping of the people do their sacrifices and all these things. But everybody knew only the priests can go into the Holy of Holies with the blood. Only the priest can offer the incense. Only the priest can do those things. He said, are you unthankful? You don't appreciate? You want the priesthood too. You want to take everything. He said, and that's why, verse 11, for which cause, that's why you and all this company are gathered together against the Lord. And what's Aaron that you murmur against him? What's Aaron done to you? 
Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram. These were two individuals, well known, like these 250, that had joined in leading this rebellion. But they weren't uh, like Korah, they weren't Levites. He sent to call them. And they said, we will not come up. Unbelief is disrespectful, isn't it? It's unthankful. It's rebellious. It's defiant. They said, is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey? They're calling Egypt the land that flows with milk and honey. You brought us up here to kill us in the wilderness. Except you make yourself altogether a prince over us. He did not. They're exaggerating, saying things that's not true. Moreover, you have not brought us into the land that flows with milk and honey. You've not given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. You hear that defiance? That's what makes this unbelief so evil. We will not. We refuse to believe. We won't accept it. We won't listen. We won't obey that is the thing that's destroying the ungodly. Then and now. A refusal to repent. Moses was wroth. And he said to the Lord, Respect not their offering. I've not taken one donkey from them. I've not hurt a one of them. And Moses said, Korah, you and all your company, you be there before the Lord tomorrow and take every man his censer and put incense in them and bring it before the Lord and the 250 censers, Aaron's going to come and bring his censer. Verse 18, and they did it. They took every man his censer and put fire on it and laid incense and came to the door of the tabernacle of congregation with Moses and Aaron. How many think this is not going to end well? for them. And our time's up today. <laughs> to be continued. you got to come back to get the rest of the story. But you can make up your mind right now, I am not going to be this dumb. Huh? I am not. Everybody said out loud, I am not, not going to rebel against the Lord or His chosen. Hallelujah. Well, please come back tomorrow and let's finish this story. We'll see you soon. Here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 702 7390.